I'm Brian O'Neill, Director of Living Landscapes here at Norfolk Botanical Garden. Today we're going to plant a Mexican summer sweet, Clethra. What I wanted to talk about mostly was the proper procedure for getting that plant into the ground and getting it well established. Plants are grown in nurseries for the most part and they are grown in a very artificial soil mix which is mostly composed of pine bark, uh, perlite, and maybe a little peat moss, that sort of thing. This is great for containers, but this is not so good for getting the plant established in the ground because the texture of these two materials is completely different. The potting media that you find from the nursery is much more coarse, it's much more aerated, and the soil that we are going to be getting our plants established in is not so coarse, usually. Here in Norfolk, we have a very nice a sandy loam soil, which drains well for the most part, and you can see by the dark color of this, this has good moisture content. It also has some good organic matter content. But the main thing is that water does not move from soils of different textures to other soils of different textures as well. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to get as much of this potting media off of the roots as much as possible before we get our plant into the ground so that it, it really connects to our native soil. I once heard a very well-respected nurseryman at a, a local seminar talk about one of the best ways to get that potting media off of the roots of plants and also to unravel the root systems. And I thought it was a little strange when I heard it, but, but here goes. What he recommended doing is taking your plant out to the curb out at the street and banging that plant on the curb, taking it out of the pot and continuing with that action. Maybe this is a little bit extreme, but you see what it's actually done. It's actually freed that root system from that circling container grown system that it had in the pot. And now we can spread that root system out into the soil in our hole and uh, the plant will grow straight away and be really connected to the native soil. You see all of the potting media that has come off and that's actually a pretty good thing. So keep this in mind as one possible way to uh, get started with your planting. This pot is a one gallon pot and it basically has just drainage holes at the bottom of the, of the container. And again, the roots will grow out, hit the sides of the pot and be directed down by these ribs. And that's a little bit more natural shape for uh, a normal root system. These containers are really kind of cool because they are what are called air root pruning containers. So you'll see that periodically there are actual holes down the sides of this pot and the pot is ribbed going down so that roots will hit the side, they're redirected, and these little holes let air in, which actually kills the root tips. And what that does is it causes the roots to branch back inside the pot and give you a much better branched root system, a little bit more of a natural root system. So overall, if you can find a plant at your local nursery in these kinds of containers, so much the better because it really takes some of the guesswork out of uh, planting a plant and unraveling that root system because it, there are so many more fine hair-like feeder roots that are involved in this container. Where roots tend to end up, or the last place where they will actually end up, is usually at the very bottom of the pot in the center. So they'll be growing down, and this is the last place that you'll find them. So I usually start down here, and just by taking your fingers, or even a tool such as this, you can actually just get in and unravel the root system. And don't be afraid to do this, because roots just like the tops of a plant um, are able to branch. If they're damaged or broken, they will actually branch and that makes a better root system overall. So don't be afraid to get your fingers in there and really just work it up to try to break the root system free of that circling tight uh, situation. And at the same time, we can do a little shaking to try to um, shake off some of this old potting media, but you will find with these root pruning containers that the inside of the root mass has many, many, many more fine root hairs. So we're not able to get 
um, a lot of this potting media off because those little root hairs are holding on to this potting media. But we're doing here, I think, a pretty good job of getting that root system broken up and unraveled so we can then go to setting it into our hole. Another aspect of uh, really doing a great job of getting your plants established is making the hole uh, that you're going to be planting the plant in uh, large enough to accommodate the root system that you have unraveled and uh, made free of the potting media. So what I recommend, uh, if you can keep in mind the um, a, a, a phrase, happy plant, happy hole, okay? And we always, another thing that we often say is, uh, make a $50 hole for a $5 plant, meaning you may, really need to make your hole larger than the pot that the plant was growing in. I usually recommend at least twice the size of the container um, that the plant was originally growing in. And as you can see with this hole here, I put two of the same size containers in the hole to show you that the hole is now twice as large as the pots that the plant was originally growing in. And this serves a couple purposes. Number one, it really does allow you to spread that root system out into the hole. And number two, it provides some uh, looser soil so that those roots can actually grow very quickly into that loosened soil. They're not uh, stopped by any hard packed uh, clay soil and they really just do grow out that much faster. They are connected much better to uh, the happy hole that the happy plant is going to be planted in. We're going to go ahead and set this in the hole and check on the depth of the hole. One thing that we don't want to do is make the hole any deeper than what the plant was growing in um, in the pot. Here is the original uh, soil level here and as you can see if you come right on across we're about right with the uh, depth of this hole and oftentimes what I like to do is to create a little mound of soil in the center of the hole and then to drape the root system out over top of that mound so it kind of sits on top of a little mound of soil and I'm creating a bit of a hollow here in the center of the plant and that will sit there right on top of that little mound that we just created. The next thing you want to do is look at your plant and see what is the best side or the best face of the plant um, because oftentimes plants have uh, somewhat of a, you know, not so good side and they have a, a really, really good side. So the side that faces uh, the public or faces uh, you and your family if you're at home um, is the side that you want to see. Now that doesn't mean that the plant won't eventually fill out on the other side and I thoroughly expect that this will, uh, will do that. The next thing that we want to do is to start filling in the hole. And this is where for the, for the best economy of, of labor, it's really best to do this standing up. And if anybody is still down on the ground pulling the soil in with your hands, that's really not the very best way to do it. So I always recommend standing up and start to fill the soil in with your shovel. That's the whole halfway filled, you take your shovel handle and turn it around and just do a light tamping so that the soil doesn't settle too much after you water it and create voids. And this um, tries to eliminate air pockets and that sort of thing. Because we, were, we took so much effort to make sure that the plant was at the same level or slightly above the surrounding soil, we want to make sure that when we're finishing up, we don't have any soil on top of the root ball, of the original root ball. So you may want to then just go in with your hand and brush that soil off because if you have soil on top of the root ball, that really makes the plant planted deeper than what it was in the original pot. Um, so we do not want to do that. But you've got extra soil left over, so what do you do with that? You don't cart it off, you don't carry it away. You actually use it to help you create a little berm or a little saucer around which you will um, mound the soil. And this serves to help hold uh, water in place when you're watering the plant. Folks, the very first water that you ever put on the plant is probably the most important because it really does get the plant settled in 
and you cannot overwater the plant when you give it that first drink. And you look how uh, quickly that water uh, disappeared. That shows how well drained the soil is, and that's what we want. So I'm actually going to give it a little bit more. And the last thing that you'll want to do is just clean up and bring your uh, mulch or your pine straw back around the plant, making sure that the mulch is not touching the trunk of the plant, but just a couple inches away. And you can mulch heavily around there, at least a couple inches of mulch, and that will help to conserve the moisture. But this plant, I would say, is off to a really, really good start. So I hope that uh, you remember, you know, a happy plant and a happy hole, making sure that the hole is wide enough to accept those roots, unraveling the root system, trying to eliminate as much of the old potting media as you can, and watering the plant and keeping a good schedule of water uh, for your plant to get established. Usually a plant will, like this will become more or less fully established after one to two years. So don't uh, hesitate to keep the water uh, going on at least once a week, especially when you have well-drained soil like we have here. So I hope you'll come out to Norfolk Botanical Garden and see our Mexican summer suite here at the admin building. And uh, happy gardening to everybody. Plan and plant for a better world.